Hi everyone. This is the second part of large sample theory. Today's topic is test of significance. A very important aspect of sampling theory is the study of the test of significance, which enable us to decide on the basis of the sample results. If the deviation between the observed sample statistic and the hypothetical parameter value or the deviation between two independent sample static is significant or might be attributed to chance or the fluctuation of the sampling since uh, for large n small n it's small n and almost all the distribution such like as binomial poisson negative biaminal hypogeometric small t capital f t square can be approximated very closely by a normal probability curve we use the normal test of significance for large sample some of the well known test of significance for studying such differences for some for small samples are t test it small t test and if test and it's fisher's J transformation. Okay, now the second topic is null and alternative hypothesis. Now, null and alternative hypothesis. The technique of Randomization used for the selection of sample units makes the test of significance valid for us. For applying the test of significance, we first set up a hypothesis, a definite statement about the population parameter. Such a hypothesis, uh, which is usually a hypothesis of no difference, is called null hypothesis. I repeat again, such a hypothesis which is usually a hypothesis of no difference is called null hypothesis and is usually denoted by capital H O. According to Professor R. A. Fisher, null hypothesis is the hypothesis which is tested for possible rejection under the assumption that it is true. Okay. Now we are going for error. Okay, now we are going for error in samplings. The main objective in sampling theory is to draw valid inference about the population parameter on the basis of the sample result. In practice, we decide to expect or reject a lot after examining a sample from it. As such, we are liable to commit the following two types of error. So, the first type of error, uh, we write it type 1 error. Now, what is type 1 error? Reject a 0 when it is true. And the second type of error sorry except a0 when it is wrong that is except a0 when h1 is true if we write P reject a0 when it is true that equal to p reject a0 a0 equals to alpha and p except a0 when it is wrong
that equal to P except A0 equal to H1. It's not A0, it is H1 equals to beta. It's alpha and it's beta. Then alpha and beta are called the sizes of type 1 error and type 2 error respectively. In practice type 1 error amount to rejecting a lot when it is good and type 2 error may be regarded as accepting the lot when it is bad. Thus, P reject a lot when it is good equal to alpha and P sorry accept a lot when it is bad that is equal to beta where alpha and beta are referred to as producer producer risks and consumers risks respectively Now, what is one tailed and two tailed test? So, in any test, the critical region is represented by a portion of area under the probability curve of the sampling distribution of the test statistic a test of any statistical hypothesis where the alternative hypothesis is one tailed right tailed or left tailed is called a one tailed test for example a test for testing the mean of population a0 mu equals to mu0 against the alternative hypothesis h1 mu greater than mu 0 its right tailed or h1 mu less than mu 0 we called it left tailed is a single test test in the right tail test h1 mu greater than mu 0 this is the critical region lies entirely in the right tail of the sampling distribution of of x bar while for the left tail test which is h1 mu less than mu 0 the critical region is entirely in the left tail of the distribution now what is the procedure for testing of hypothesis procedure for testing of hypothesis okay we now summarize below the various step in testing of statistical hypothesis in systematic manner the first one is null hypothesis. Step up the null hypothesis H0. Second one is alternative hypothesis.
set up the alternative hypothesis H1. This will be enable us to decide whether we have to use a single trailed right or left test or two tailed test. The third one is level of significance. Now what is level of significance? Choose the appropriate level significance such so like uh, you could say this alpha depending on the reality of the estimates and permissible risks. This is to be decided before sample is drawn that is alpha is fixed in advance. The fourth one test static sticks or test criterion. Computer the uh, it's uh, compute the test statistic. Um, we write uh, z equal to t minus e t by s e t under h o or h zero. The fifth is conclusion. Its conclusion we compared the computed value of z in step 4 with the significant value tabulate value z alpha at the given level of significance alpha. Now, if mod z less z alpha, that is, we repeat now if mod z less z alpha. That is, if the calculate value of z is less than z alpha, we say it is not significant. By this, we mean that the difference t minus its small t, small t minus e t, is just due to fluctuation of sampling, and the sample data do not provide us sufficient evidence against the null hypothesis, which may therefore be accepted. Now if mod z greater than z alpha, that is if the computed value of test statics is greater than the critical or significant value, then we say that it is significant and the null hypothesis is rejected at the level of significance alpha, that is with confidence coefficient 1 minus alpha.